I'm currently in Denver, the Mile High City, and I'm with Terry Wells of 3E, and I'm looking forward to discuss the latest developments, regulatory affairs, and sustainability here in North America. Uh, minor disclaimer, it's October, so it, the November elections are still due. Terry, regulatory affairs is more a marathon than a sprint. Can you bring us up to speed with the latest Tosca developments? It's nice to see you again, Sherrod. Um, I would say probably the biggest development that we're really watching in the U.S. are the Tosca Section 6 risk evaluations. Um, EPA is currently in the process of finalizing um, some of the risk evaluations, and there are a number of risk of management plans that are due to come out in final rule form um, very shortly, probably in the next six months. Um, the other big thing to watch is the new chemicals coming into the task evaluation process. I think one of the things that chemical manufacturers have really learned from the first batch of risk evaluation is they need to really get involved early. And it's not just the manufacturers and importers that need to be worried about this. It's the entire supply chain because the manufacturers and importers cannot uh, know every use case and have all of the data on use and exposure and disposal mechanisms and things like that. So it's really critical that everyone in the supply chain get involved in the TOSCA risk evaluation and risk management process right from the beginning and throughout the entire process to make sure that um, it's a, the best evaluation we can have. It's nice that you mentioned the supply chain because on Monday morning we have already an in-depth seminar with all the various perspectives from a chemical producer all to a downstream user, a retailer, you know, all the different perspectives on risk assessment, management and mitigation in that value chain. So I think that's very valuable. Yeah, that should be an excellent session. Um, and I think that there are a lot of lessons learned from the first batch. So this will be a great opportunity for different actors to understand their role. In North America, uh, the implementation of GHS, uh, we're currently at revision seven, there are also non-harmonized classification, basically. Can you share right. more about that? Because that's an important in issue for industry. Right, I think when both um, in, uh, Environment Canada and Health Canada and um, the OSHA put out their rules, I think the headline that they used was the harmonization with GHS revision seven. But the pieces of the um, regulations that they put in place that are non-harmonized are probably gonna be the bigger challenges for industry. And um, they're gonna make a lot of stewardship gains, I think. Um, one of the big changes that they put in place um, in the U.S. is the um, addition of hazards associated with changes in physical form and hazards associated with chemical reactions in use. So that's information that's always been required under OSHA, but um, it wasn't really explicitly sell, uh, spelled out. And um, as we look at different manufacturers, they've implemented different ways or haven't included it at all because it's not explicitly spelled out. So that's one of the big uh, unknowns right now. We're looking for um, additional clarification from OSHA exactly what the requirements will be. But I think as good product stewards, it's our um, job to make sure that we're putting the information um, into the safety data sheets and the labels that is going to make um, hazard communication really effective. Okay, now uh, GHS in North America and in the total of the Americas will be part of the Monday afternoon where we also will have a lot of Latin American authorities to sketch what's happening there. Um, but there is another part. If you look at the US, it's federal. We were in California last time. We hope to have them on board again for Boston. Massachusetts will be there. State level, so much going on. Can you tell some important points there? Yeah, it's been a real challenge to keep up with the state regulations. Um, as the federal government continues to work slowly through, through their risk assessments, um, the states are not waiting to um, wait, see what the federal government does. They're taking action. So um, we've seen a lot of different regulations um, come out, uh, mainly around um, PFAS. We've had a lot of regulations come out around cosmetics, um, consumer product safety, um, and extended producer responsibility. So those are the main focus areas for the states. Um, we have seen some efforts to try to harmonize the regulations between states. Um, and that's, to some extent, the newer regulations that we're seeing coming out are uh, somewhat harmonized, but it seems that each state needs to put its own twist on things just to make it uh, a little bit more complex to develop a comprehensive compliance plan and to really um, pay attention to what's going. The definitions are different, the implementation timeframes are different, and the scope of coverage is a little different. So um, it's a lot to keep up with. Yeah, so states, federal, the Americas, are there other points of attention where you would say, hey, pay attention to this? 
Well, there are a lot of movements um, going on around sustainability in the state of California. So um, they've got microplastics regulations they're talking about. They've got a lot of other initiatives. So um, California is definitely the state to watch. Um, they're adopting a lot of the principles that are um, in Europe. And uh, California is a big influential state, so I keep my eye on California. Okie dokie. Looking very much forward to all these authorities and industry, and of course, three and yourself to be in March in Boston at Chemical in the Americas 2025. Look forward to seeing you there.